It sucks. I, I can't describe it any better than that. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day, whether you're watching me on YouTube or wherever you like to download your podcast. We are free. I appreciate your support. Do me a favor. Show your support. We're real close to becoming a 4,000 subscriber show. You can be that guy. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button. Smash it into the ground. And I come at you five times a week. Hit that bell notification button and you will not miss an episode. All right. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Nevertheless, this is the time... This is the time of year when the depth chart can start to kind of take a hit. And you can see on the rundown, it might have started already. Second segment, we're going to do a little bit of a recruiting update, give you some recruiting news. Haven't done that in a minute. And then the third segment of the show, we're going to go over the AP Top 25 poll that was released on Monday. But first, what sucks? Well, uh, the D line might be down a guy for the for the season. It hasn't been confirmed. Nothing is official until Lincoln Riley uh, mentions the player's name. However, it was reported by another credible member of the media earlier in the day on Monday that Solo was injured. Um, when I heard the news. I felt like someone punched me in the gut. It, yeah. Um, I literally, once I heard, I, I I reached out to a couple of folks who would be in the know, close to the team, people I trust. And, um, you know, this, this one, one of these people said, you might want to do a story on Solo next week. I said, all right, well. Yeah, you know, I think he's going to probably be a starter, maybe even a team captain. Keep that in the back of my mind. He was leaning a different direction. This actually happened, Solo's injury apparently happened last week, and it's been kept hush-hush, uh, like I said, until someone else in the media chose to report it on Monday before USC, or even the young man had the opportunity to, to break the news. So... When I ended up confirming the information over on WeRSC.com later in the afternoon, I felt like a hypocrite, and I feel like crap because if there were two players, I think everyone wanted to see have a full year playing. First one, obviously, is Solo, the guy we're talking about right now. I mean, you think about what he went through, changed positions. Became a defensive end, and he was actually kicking ass spring and halfway through fall camp. The tough break. Uh, the other player, Jude Wolf, and that's why uh, what was it last week? Uh, a little over a week ago, I kind of went old man um, with him, asking him to reconsider running across McClintock on his way to practice. As you saw, I posted the video. It's up there. You, it's a, there's a short video. When he, he sees me as he's about to pass through Gugate into Howard Jones Field, he says, see, I'm walking. He got the message. Anyways, I'm sure the news uh, is going to be released eventually. And my thoughts and prayers are out there. So um, one more year for Solo? Here's what I'll say. I know this because this came from a... Someone pretty close to Solo. That was the plan before the injury. That was the plan back in spring. That he was going to come back in 2024. Again, that's a lot. To, that's a big ask. We'll see what happens. We only want what's best. So let's get back to uh, practice on Monday. They were back at it Monday afternoon. Yeah, Monday afternoon. And Lincoln Riley, he he started he he spoke following Monday's practice about getting the linebackers healthy for the first game. So I'm kind of on a tangent here, 
that injuries are, are starting to guys are coming back, but we have to kind of keep injuries at the forefront of everything. It's a football is a it's a collision sport. It's not a violent sport. It's a collision sport. Now, I anticipate Eric Gentry being ready, and I think Shane Lee will be ready um, for the first game. I guess the question is, how many snaps will both of those guys be prepared to play in that first game? And don't forget Rajon Davis. Uh, he's still working his, working himself back in, even though he's full go right now at practice. He had that broken bone in his hand at the start of fall camp. So there's three linebackers that are working through, you know, nagging injuries. Eric Gentry is still rehabbing from his uh, foot surgery that he had during the offseason. I just mentioned Rajon Lee, uh, Rajon Davis, and Shane Lee has some sort of soft tissue injury that he's working through. With that said, let's kind of shift gears towards uh, Taka Curtis. He got a lot more praise, and this time it came from Lincoln Riley. So we've heard about his teammates. We've heard Caleb Williams call him a, just call him a destroyer. He won't call him Captain America just yet. Uh, Coach Kyle McDonald has referred to him as Captain America. This is what Lincoln Riley had to say after regarding Taka Curtis after Monday's practice. Quote, he's been available every practice, and he practices really, really, really hard. Gotta love those three, uh, the three really rule. Those are his strengths. He doesn't hesitate, and he goes, and he's still, and he's still young. He makes mistakes. There are things, though, that you can fix, and you see the progress every day because it's important to the kid because he does work hard, and you never like like you never have to coach that with him. And sometimes other younger guys, you're coaching the mentality along with the scheme, along with the technique, and it's all on them at once. In other words, right now, they don't have to worry about Packer Curtis's effort. He continued. Tackett's one of those kids we're having to coach the scheme, we're having to coach the technique, but the effort and all of that stuff, we don't have to say nothing to him. There, I just said that. So you don't have to motivate that dude at all. He's going to walk out here and ready to practice every single day. So when they when they can take that off of your plate and you can zero in on those other things, you're going to progress quickly. And he's done that, end quote. Look. I, I think everybody knows that eventually Taka Curtis is going to um, be a major impact player and, and work his way into that starting, into one of those starters roles. I, I think it's it's getting to feel like Captain America's time is ready to take over now. And he's basically just, it's, he's taking advantage of the opportunity. I just mentioned Eric Gentry, Shane Lee, Rajon Davis. They're not. 100% yet. We need somebody who is 100%. Patrick Curtis is. The rush ends are starting to get deeper. You know, there's here's some positivity. Romello Height is back with the group, back in the fold after missing the first half of camp. He's worked his way back into uh, being able to go without any type of uh, limitations. And I mentioned this on another episode. You know, regarding the rush ends, um, the line in the sand between that group and the defensive ends, um, that line is going to be blurred most of the year. Uh, guys are going to be going back and forth between those two position groups. Anthony Lucas, Sam Green, Braylon Shelby are three guys who definitely can coexist at either spot. Um, Alex Grinch, after practice, uh, he, had, he had something really positive to say. Uh, with regards to Zion Branch, quote, he has made as much progress in 14 days as anybody I've ever been around, end quote. Okay. It looks like the safety position is getting deeper. <laughs> Again, I, I just where is where are they going to find a spot for him? Is it going to be free safety, strong safety? You know, with his size, um, I wouldn't mind having that intimidation factor for guys who want to come across the middle. 
Alex uh, Grinch, he was Coach Grinch, he was also asked about Shane Lee and Eric Gentry if they would be ready in week one. I gave you my opinion. Here's what Coach Grinch had to say. He's a man of many, many words. Quote, I believe so. End quote. So there you go. And there was one more um, word, some words of wisdom from, from Coach Grinch about the defense. And it was actually, this is something I think Coach and fans you want to hear. Very complimentary. These guys have let us coach them a lot less managing, end quote. And what he meant was the effort. It's there. The stuff that Riley was talking about with regards to Taka Curtis. That's already there. Now it's just much more about, you know, letting letting the coaching staff just impart that technique and showing them how to get their, get their stuff right so it shows up during the game. Uh, Miller Moss and the two freshman uh, running backs, Lincoln Riley said, had really strong second scrimmages. The offense apparently had a better day than the defense, allegedly. Um, but he did he did mention Miller Moss and Quentin Joyner and Amari and Peterson as having really good days. And then, you know, when I'm not here on Locked on USC, I spend my other time over at WeRSC.com. Well, my partner in crime, Eric McKinney, and he said this. And keep in mind, if you've ever seen or spoken with Eric, he is about as excitable as uh, comedian Stephen Wright telling a joke. Look up Stephen Wright if you don't know who he is. Funny as hell, but not a guy who I would say is overly enthusiastic. <laughs> um, however, Eric had a chance to watch the defensive line uh, hit the sleds and the pads on during Monday's practice, and he said, quote, there's something different about the impact Bear Alexander generates. I was watching them today at a drill, and it was Bear Alexander, Keon Barr, Stanley Taufo, Solomon Bird, Dejan Benton, and Kobe Pepe all together. Now, I'm not going to disrespect Tuli Tuiapolotu by saying that by itself is a better group than what USC had last year. But then you throw in Anthony Lucas, Jack Sullivan, Tyrone Tulaney, San Green, Jamil Muhammad, Romello Height, Braylon Shelby, Elijah Hughes, and Devin Tompkins. And oh my goodness, end quote. Just for contextual purposes, that oh my goodness part at the end is literally akin to McKinney doing a hell yeah high five after the Padres beat the Dodgers in the playoffs. Oh my goodness, is Eric McKinney getting excited. Um, and then one last note that he picked up from from Monday's practice, the team worked on some fulls, uh, full special team stuff uh, for the first time in front of the media. And it appears that Rayleigh Brown and Zachariah Branch are going to be the top two options um, at the returns. So there you go. There's your practice report slash injury report. I'll keep you updated as the news comes down. But um, we're going to hope that the uh, the team doesn't thin out anymore before San Jose State arrives on August 26th. But you guys out there who do have thinning hair, I got something for you. Man, are you tired of weakening or thinning hair? Uh, do you want to reach your full hair, hair potential? Kind of like this. Yeah, look. I got a really thick head of hair. Leading hair growth supplement, Nutrafol, helps improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements use physician-formulated, natural, science-backed ingredients. Their drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. Yes, sir. Go to Nutrafol.com forward slash men to take their hair wellness quiz. Hair health. I want to say this again. Hair health wellness quiz. Ident and that's going to help you identify your causes of your thinning hair. And Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better health hair through whole body wellness. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth, 
from within, targeting at the root causes of thinning hair, such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism. And it works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair, hair in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol. So you might want to check this out. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping. When you go to Nutrafol.com forward slash men and enter the promo code Locked on College. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men. And that's spelled N like Nancy, U, T like Trojan, R, A like Apple, F like Frank, O like Oscar, L like loser, dot com slash men and enter promo code locked on college. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code locked on college. All right, I'm going to do a, I'm going to blast through a real quick recruiting update. It's It's been a minute and kind of let you know where USC is at here on, you're watching this episode on August 15th. The last time we talked uh, recruiting, I mentioned the about the two decommitments, uh, offensive lineman Manessi Atiti and cornerback Dakota Fields. If I'm Lincoln Riley and Dante Williams and Alex Grinch, I'm probably going to wipe my hands and say, no more. I'm done with Dakota. It's one thing to take the whole name, image, likeness bag, and that's fine. But then to turn around and go to the, and actually say this, I was just waiting for Oregon to make the move to the Big Ten before I decommitted. Hmm. I know he made that decommitment call to Lincoln Riley. I really want to know how that call went. Love to have been on that phone call. Again, all the success in the world, but it's really coming across as he's a me first guy. And this goes back to why I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent. of If you're going to commit, verbal commit, then let, you know what? Let's just cut to the chase. Sign your financial aid paperwork. Lock yourself in. Let's get let's get rid get rid of letter of intent day. I mean, if we're being honest, it's kind of pointless right now, anyways. Especially with the you know one time transfer exemption that you get with the through the portal. The Trojans are going to have to beat. Notre Dame, and then hope that Kingston Villamuasa finds his common sense and flips back to USC. That's really their biggest miss, if you want to call it that, um, so far during the recruiting season. But USC isn't done. Um, they are going after another linebacker. His name is Chris Cole, mentioned it before. He's a four-star. He's from Gaithersburg, Maryland. He plays at Quince. Excuse me, Chris Cole is from Virginia. Um, let me uh, jump ahead to that because I get my notes mixed up here. Chris Cole is a four-star linebacker from Virginia. He took his unofficial visit to USC in early June. Now, last week, um, he released a list of top six schools. USC was made the cut, and among them was Georgia, Tennessee, Miami, Penn State, and Virginia Tech plus USC. Six foot four, 220 pounds. Uh, according to On3, he is the number 53 overall prospect in the country and the number overall, number five overall linebacker in the whole, entire 2024 cycle. So if Kingston was number one, you could probably settle for number five and not feel too bad. He's already taken official visits uh, in June to Penn State, Virginia Tech, Georgia, and Miami. Well, uh, young Mr. Cole is scheduled to officially visit USC on September 2nd. That's when USC plays Nevada. Uh, I really hope, and I do anticipate, Tacker Curtis probably playing big minutes in that game. Send that freshman vibe that, yeah, 
you can play at USC. And then a week later, um, Chris Cole is going to announce his school choice September 10th. Now, I think USC is probably going to be 3-0 by that time. It should be. I mean, San Jose State, Nevada, Stanford. Maybe other players are going to recognize how good USC's defense is playing by then, and they might reconsider and decommit. Dakota Fields, you stay where you're at. You're good. Where you've always wanted to be. You've said it more than once. But, you know, players like, again, I mentioned Kingston Viliamuasa. Maybe all of a sudden he starts feeling that, I may want to stay home itch. Maybe Peyton Woodyard. He's flipped from Georgia to Alabama. Third time could be a charm. You never know. And don't forget, there's all those guys out there that are still uncommitted. Aiden Breland. Jalen Harvey, oh, by the way, um, he has USC in his final three. Penn State and Maryland. Penn State is considered the favorite. But, hey, you know what? Don't count USC out here. With, again, how well USC performs on the defensive side of the ball is going to be the best recruiting pitch Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch can put into words. You know, what, what is, what, what's that saying? If you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. I think everybody just wants to see USC's defense walk the walk. I'm talking about it. I'm pumping them up. The coaching staff is pumping them up. The players are confident. Caleb Williams said it's causing the offense to be inconsistent. I'm going to talk more about that on tomorrow's episode. I got a little bit more insight about that. But before tomorrow's episode, we still got one more segment to go here on this episode. So you can see the... Uh, the preseason AP Top 25 poll came out Monday morning. And while you're looking at the poll there, I'm going to kind of go over it with you. So you're wondering, well, where's USC? They came in at number six. And again, I would have them ranked higher than LSU. But again, number five, number six, mock Knicks. Uh, it, no big deal. Half a dozen on one hand. Six and the other means the same thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, look, and I'm sure the rationale for having LSU number five and USC number six um, comes down to people thinking LSU has a better defense. And until USC proves it, they do. However, um, Jaden Daniels is not better than Caleb Williams. And USC has a better wide receiver core. And I think they probably have a better overall squad as well. While you're looking at the uh, preseason preseason top 25, um, I'll do the breakdown for you. The SEC led with 16, six teams in the first poll. And of those six, three of them are actually in the top five, Georgia, oh, Alabama, LSU. The other three teams that round out the, uh, the SEC, Ole Miss, and a and oh, Tennessee, Ole Miss, and A&M, excuse me. The Big Ten and the Pac-12, they each got five teams in. Michigan and Ohio State are number two and three, respectively. The Big 12 with four teams, the ACC with three. Here's my question. Why is A&M ranked at number 23? Seriously, why? I mean, why are they above Tulane? Um, they Texas A&M finished five and seven last year. Mm -hmm. I uh, a couple other teams that I think are probably ranked a little bit too high: uh, Florida State and Clemson at eight and nine. Um, I don't know, too high. I would probably have Washington above them both. Maybe even I'd probably even slot Tennessee and Notre Dame higher. I, I get that Florida State's quarterback, uh, what's his name, Jordan Travis, is a Heisman contender. Let's get this out of your face. You're done looking at that. You can look at 
you can I'll have my face you can stare at for now for the rest of the show. Um, I get that you know FSU's quarterback is a, a Heisman contender, so maybe that's why they have them up so high. But and they did win ten games last year. But look, the ACC is not that good. They only had three teams in the top twenty-five, and that tenth win that Florida State earned, it came against a below 500 Oklahoma Sooner team, who, by the way, check in at number 20, really? Well, benefit of the doubt, a lot of programs, USC still carries that same type of cachet. Um, but I don't know. If, if you do not finish above 500 the previous year, I don't know if you deserve top 25 consideration the following year. Especially if you think back to how bad Oklahoma looked. Yeah. You thought USC looked like hot garbage on defense? Go check out some of those Sooner scores. Then get back to me. I know I've got some Oklahoma fans that watch the show. Look forward to your feedback. Boomer. Anyways, back to USC. Uh, the Trojans are going to play against the number 10 Washington Huskies, number 13 Notre Dame Fighting Irish, number 14 Utah Utes, and then number 15 Oregon Ducks. That's who's on USC's schedule. My feeling is by the time USC plays Utah, um, they'll, Utah will probably be ranked lower if ranked at all. Look, I, I like Coach Whittingham. I, I love that he kind of has that chip on his shoulder attitude, but he did something really dumb, in my opinion, with uh, one of his scrimmages. He made his quarterbacks lie during five for contact, and Cam Rising is still rehabbing from his ACL. Well, backup quarterback got his clock cleaned, and from what I understand, a couple of cracked ribs, a lacerated liver. Um, yeah. You're now down to your third string quarterback before the season starts. Okay. I wouldn't have done it. Now, when USC does arrive in South Bend this year, uh, Notre Dame could potentially be undefeated. And USC, when they arrive, definitely should be clean, pressed, and undefeated. So that's going to be a fun game. Uh, I'd love to know what. Notre Dame and USC will be could be higher in the rankings. Again, the teams ahead of USC, USC could maybe jump LSU, depending on how they look in the games. But you've got Ohio State. Oh, by the way, they play Notre Dame early. So there you go. There could be some movement. We'll see what happens. Um, and then USC, they have the two Northwest schools um, who... I think, let me ask you this. Who should be ranked higher? The Huskies or the Ducks? Right now, Washington is number 10. Oregon's number, what, 15? Who's going to be ranked higher by the time you when USC plays them? Here's my opinion on this. And I, I know the when the rankings come out, it's, it's fun for the fans. But I don't think the rankings should come out until after the first game. And here's why. There are literally voters out there who would have voted, and he's on record saying he would have voted Colorado number 20. And he went on to say, and here's why. He tried to use USC and Lincoln Riley as the example of what USC accomplished last year through the transfer portal. First of all, um, Shadour Sanders, he might be a really good quarterback. He's not Caleb Williams. So despite the transfers um, that Colorado has brought in, as well as what Lincoln Riley brought in last year, USC's roster was much better than the one Coach Primetime inherited. And look, I get trying to pump up the Colorado program and trying to draw attention, whether it's to the Colorado program or to yourself who said you're going to vote Colorado number 20, it's out there. Find it, viewers. You know how to do it. But look, 
I think you need to have a little bit of credibility. Find me, you need to show me enough wins on that Colorado schedule to finish above 500, let alone in the top 20. So yes, while Coach Primetime, I, I think he can preach and he can motivate. Some might not agree uh, because I literally, I'm already hearing that some of those new guys um, that he brought over through the transfer portal, veterans, they're already doing their furrowed brow, eye roll, you know, type of thing with whole Coach Primetime's shtick. It's already starting to wear thin. So we'll see how the team was. And, and here's my last point on, on Colorado. We'll see how, the, his, how that team responds when um, when those losses start to pile up and Coach Dion starts blaming the players for not loving the game and, ex- and becoming um, complacent and accepting losing because that's his way of motivating. But we'll see how that goes. All right. USC, top six, first AP poll. I think they're going to be probably at least number five maybe higher by the time that Notre Dame roll Notre Dame game rolls around. We'll see. Anyways, I'll be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow. Until then, everyone, you know what to do.